Go, 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 Drop it, drop it, drop it! Move, move, move! Get behind me, get behind me, get behind me! You guys may be aware of what's happening in Israel. There's a lot to talk about, but one of the primary focal points that I would like to discuss today is the idea of the populace in whatever country it may be, including the U.S., coming out in the masses to defend our country or their country. And I want you to think about that. <clears throat> a lot of people will say the drills that you just saw are extremely dangerous, and let me tell you, you are very, very right. If you do not have the skill set and you do not have an extreme level of self-control, it is a guarantee it's only a matter of time before you take somebody's life. One of the things that I see in all the thousands of shooters that I've taught over the years is most people, their skill set in general is very minimal. Again, I'm not bashing on law enforcement. You look at the hit rate of law enforcement, it's extremely low if we accumulate all the numbers. CCW shootings, how many rounds miss in these shootings? And it's just a matter of time before someone downrange who doesn't deserve it takes a round. I have this concept in my mind and I tell people in my classes like, listen, when you pick up a gun and you get a CCW, you have a responsibility, all right, that trumps your right to train so you don't kill someone. And I simply tell them in my class, listen, if I see you out in public and you pick up that gun and you start putting rounds downrange, missing, you're an active shooter. I don't care where your mindset is. I don't care what you're trying to do. I don't care where your heart is. You are now an active shooter, potentially taking innocent life. And now I have an obligation, regardless if I want to or not, to stop the active shooter, regardless if it's someone else who has ill intent or if it's you who's just trying to do a good job and neutralize this situation, but you yourself aren't trained. At the end of the day, innocent lives are taken at both hands. So <clears throat> this is something for you guys to think about. There's so many videos online from years ago of the Russians doing some crazy drills and people praise them. You, now you have all these civilians and foreign military guys dressing up in camo, going to the range, doing drills like this. And we see all of these very close calls or people getting injured all right so there's no way for me to tell you you can or can't do something like this like i said it requires an, a killer set of skill sets which are easy to obtain with practice but the self-control that is needed to be developed to handle a situation like this is paramount Static line training is a necessity, but at some point we have to think beyond this. And remember, in no way am I telling you to do this. You're putting all the risk on you and the people you train with. Okay, what you just saw was not edited. It's 100% legit. Okay, I've been training my children to do these <coughs> drills for the last 10 to 13 years. All three of my children could put a thousand rounds on target of those conditions. We're never missing because I've taught them the skill set, but most importantly, as I said, I've taught them to have a Navy SEAL level of self control. So let me ask you this how many of you think what you just saw was irresponsible and it's dangerous? As I said, you're right. It's absolutely dangerous and it's only irresponsible when you do something like this and you allow your ego and pride to get the best of you. So should you do this? My personal and professional opinion, absolutely not. Is it possible to obtain this skill set? Yes, if you're training under the right person. However, I want you to understand if you ever come train with me, do not expect any type of training like this. You've never seen me talk about this. You've never seen me demonstrate something like this. Um, it's one of those things that's kind of taboo. It has the potential to run an image, but the reality is I've already built my image and I want to help people better understand the reality of the world we live in. So um, what really sparked this video is Hayden sent me a video. It looked like they were in another country. They were in camo and a very similar drill like this. The guy comes out. He takes a shot or two. He makes some type of calls and he's here 
he pauses, he takes a shot, and he shoots the guy downrange in the arm. Okay, so we have a couple concepts here, and we'll just talk about this. <clears throat> if you look at his sights, he's literally inside of the person's arm. Okay, this was not a fundamental issue. This was 100%. The guy was not even locked in on the target. Maybe he was trying to shoot very close off of the body. Okay. Common sense says, if I'm in a situation like this, I want to be as far away from this person as possible. Okay, if you take it upon yourself to do a drill like this, once again, I'm not telling you to, one thing we have to consider is response time. The reality is, if this was a CCW situation, this person in no way, unless their back toward, is towards me, is going to stand there just static, frozen which means they're gonna start moving, okay? Ideally, the best place to go is that direction or here, but out of, when people are fearful, we have to uh, take in consideration that they may go towards our gunfire. So if I'm right off this person's shoulder and they start to move and I'm in the middle of my trigger pull, I do not have the time visually um, to stop that trigger press. They are going to take a round. Never, ever, ever, take shots within a couple feet of this person, okay? It has to be outside of your response time, all right? Your visual response time, which on the average, the average person is 0.37 to 0.41 seconds. It actually can go up even further than that or higher than that, okay? So, <clears throat> so just like in all of our training videos, we're gonna start from ground level and build up. I don't have a standalone target, but I highly, 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 I'll say it a few more times, I recommend you get a standalone target. I'm going to be that standalone target. Now, I think we can all agree the best position for Hayden to be in is far away from me as an individual as possible. But once again, what if the dynamic here changes and I'm further downrange? He can't get in front of me. He can't really get around me. He is forced to fight in this position. And that's where our skill set and self-control come in. So... We could have him move off this line, but once again, we've already have drilled that into our heads until we can't do it anymore. So now I'm gonna force him to be static. Remember, simulate that I'm a paper target, okay? So he's gonna come out whenever he's ready. He's gonna take one or two shots here. He's gonna break up high ready, low ready, represent as he breaks up or down, finger is index. At no time is he allowed to flag me. So, still pretty close, right? All right, but the level of control and skill set he has allows him to be able to perform this. I will tell you, he has been doing this since a very young age, and I mean very young. So, <clears throat> next drill. One of the things you may notice in this drill, too, that I'm pretty much centered in between these targets as well as Hayden, so that gives him an equal amount of space between his shooting or his gun and me, okay? So now I'm gonna create a little bit more distance. All right, I'm just gonna go further back. Nothing changes, and in all honesty, based on the environment or the setup that we have, me going a little bit further back creates a greater angle on each side, which actually makes it safer overall. Because if he does have a fundamental issue, all right, the funnel gets bigger the further we go out here, okay? So nothing changes. Slow, smooth, controlled. All right, my next step is I could go back here. What changes? Nothing. If Once again, if you look at the angle, it's safer for me to be here while he's taking those shots because from where I am to here is greater the angle or trajectory of the shooting, okay? But I'm gonna take it up a step, okay? so. I'm gonna center myself. I'm gonna put myself in a position of a little bit closer. Same thing. It increases the distance here, but self-control says, well, we're a little bit tighter here, so we gotta uh, be a little more cautious. All 
All right, for cameraman safety, we're gonna go ahead and get a clear and safe gun, slide home, pull the trigger. And as we do this again, without the shooting, Alex is gonna work around us just so you can actually see how far or how close Hayden is actually shooting from me, okay? So he's probably 20 inches here. All right, and this is extremely, extremely close, okay? Um, in a real life situation, one of the things you want to consider, and I'm not talking about real life training, I'm talking about in a CCW situation, if I were to take those shots, even if I successfully neutralize this threat, there's a potential for powder burns or even putting somebody's eye out or doing some severe damage. So we need to take that in consideration. Remember, the overall, the primary goal is to get as far away from people as possible, but at the end of the day, that's not the reality sometimes. I can't get these people out of the way. But as we go back, go ahead. I'm roughly in the center of the targets again. As I said, that angle increases so the chances of me being hit here actually decrease all right guys so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it helped bring a oh crap factor to the reality of what we're dealing with if you think for a second that it can't happen here in the u.s you are sadly mistaken so you have a responsibility as an american to be in shape Get your skill sets up, get your priorities right to ensure that if it ever comes down to it, you pick up a gun, you go home to your family, and you don't take the life of innocent people. Let us know what you think in the comments. Have a great day and God bless.